read two scriptures. One's from Luke 14, verse 12. Jesus said, He said, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back and you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Here's the, here's the sentence. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Remember that verse. Even though they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And then the verse that I'm really going to preach from mostly is Acts 20. In verse 32, he says, Now I commit to you God and the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, here it is. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's my sermon, okay? That's my last sermon of the year. Well, no, Christmas Eve. Well, that'll be about Christmas. This is my last normal sermon of the year. It is better to give than to receive. You agree with that? Seriously, you all agree with that. You're not just making these things up. It's, it's kind of tough to believe, though, isn't it? Be honest. It's okay. It's, it's hard to accept that belief that it is better to give something away than to receive something. Especially this time of year. Because you're make have you all made out your list? Checked it twice. Who's on the naughty list? Who's not getting anything this year? Anybody? <laughs> a lot of people. I'll be honest, I'll tell you a little something I'll tell you a little something about myself. I'm I'm hard to shop for. I am impossible to shop for because I'm kind of like Lucy in that Peanuts show. I like big things. I'd like a new truck. You know what I really want for Christmas? Property. If somebody would give me some property where I can hunt on a lake and a cabin. This is the things I want. Um, any, does anyone here not like getting gifts? Does anybody here go, oh, more presents? <laughs> Darn it. Anybody? Um, I remember the, the big, one of the biggest, funnest memories I have as a kid, and you got to be a little older to get this, the J.C. JCPenney Christmas catalog would come in the mail. Remember that? Or Sears. We had pennies. We were pennies people. And you'd go, my brother and I would flip through that pennies catalog and we'd mark whatever we wanted. We'd hope Santa would bring that. You know, we'd mark whatever we wanted. And then Christmas Eve would come and you open your gifts and you'd be like, I did not mark underwear and socks, okay? <laughs> I swear I did not mark that on that catalog. It's because a lot of, a lot of it with Christmas is, you know, we do kind of get caught up in the getting, the receiving. I, I love this. There was a husband and wife, and they were shopping, and the husband disappeared, and she couldn't find him. So the wife calls the husband on the phone and says, hey, where are you? And he said, hey. He goes, remember that, remember that little jewelry store we went in about five years ago? And there was that necklace you really fell in love with, and we didn't have the money at the time to buy it, and all that. He goes, he goes remember that? And she gets all choked up. She said, yeah, I remember that place. And he goes, I'm at the gun shop right next to there. <laughs> Andrew, I knew you'd like that one. That was for you, Andrew. In the next, wait, what are we going to do here? 12 minutes? I'm going, to, I'm going to teach you that it is better to give than to receive. Okay, <clears throat> first of all, the biggest giver is God. He's the biggest giver. He's given you everything. He gave you this world to live in. Remember in Genesis, he even, he even told Adam and Eve, he said, I give you dominion over the planet. It's yours. I give you power over everything that lives in this planet. It's all yours. He gives you food. He gives you air. He gives you water. He gives you breath of life. 
He gives you everything. You cannot outgive God, okay? You cannot outgive God. What, what do you have that you could give to God that you could outgive Him? What do you own or possess that you could give to God and all of a sudden God would say, whoa, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have anything like that. Most of all, he gave you his son Jesus. We're going to celebrate on that on Tuesday night. Most of all, he gave you his son Jesus to die for your sins. So number, the first thing you've got to remember is you cannot outgive God. God is the ultimate giver, and I think we get it from him. Okay. Now, number one, why it is better to give than to receive this is not a deep theological statement, but I'll say it anyway. You're not used to deep theological statements anyway. <laughs> giving makes you feel good. Does giving make anybody feel good here? Anybody get a good feeling when you give? I know, I know people outside the church and outside religion, they, they would disagree with that. And I said, what are you talking about? Boy, that, that guy's nuts. That, that bald guy's nuts up there. What are you talking about? You know, oh, but it, it, it does. It makes us feel good. Unless you have the Scrooge complex. Anybody dealing with that this time of year? The Scrooge complex you just don't want to share? How about this? Let me ask you this. We have any, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use the word. We have any hoarders here? <laughs> Anybody who just can't, can't, can't let it go? Can't give it up? I know, I know people, they have 25 toothbrushes, but they're not going to give one away because then they only have 24. My neighbor, God love him, my neighbor has 200 rolls of toilet paper in his basement. 200 rolls. And it's the good stuff. <laughs> 200. But... I'm going to teach you giving. When you give, it makes you feel good. Jesus used the words. Here's the words he used. He said, it is, it is blessed to give. It is more, here's the words. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Watch those words. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In other words, if you want to be blessed, he's giving you the, he's giving you the direction for, for blessing. <clears throat> you know what that phrase does? That totally debunks the idea that to be blessed means you got a lot of stuff. Totally debunks it. A lot of people feel like I'm blessed because I got all these things and that's why I'm blessed. And Jesus debunks that. He says to be blessed is to, is to give. I, I had a really good friend years ago and she would always say, she'd always say, I'm so blessed. And she'd say, we're so blessed. We live in a big house and my kids are perfect. And my husband has a good job and makes a lot of money. And I drive a Hummer. And it's like, I am so blessed. Kids, perfect. I knew her kids. They're not. Um, <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> but she didn't get it. Jesus comes along and says, if you want to be blessed, it's not, that you, it's not the stuff you have blessings from God or when you you'll be blessed when you give when you give things away totally debunks that thing you want to really anybody want to really be blessed anybody okay three people good if you really <laughs> I love saying that you want to really be blessed here's what Jesus that scripture I, t I just read the first one what did Jesus say you really want to be blessed you give to people that cannot repay you you give to people who cannot repay you. Then he said, you'll really be blessed. That's the purest blessing, is when you give to people when they cannot pay you back. Because I think all of us, and I'm guilty of this too, we give to people a lot of times hoping, eh, we'll get a little something back, right? Anybody? When I was a landscaper years ago, we'd help each other out on jobs. And even when I worked construction, Mike Fortman, he was always famous for that, grabbing us to do side jobs with him. And here's the thing, when we, oh yeah, you knew Mike. Um, whenever we'd help each other out, there was no money that exchanged hands. But you knew if your buddy helped you do something, they were obligated to help you back. No money exchanged hands, but, but labor did or something like that. And so that's how, we, that's how we rolled. We knew that if I helped this guy over here, 
the next time I've got something going on, he's going to be with me and he's going to help me do this over here. And I, that's kind of gotten into my, that's kind of gotten into my career now where like, um, like when I do weddings now, <laughs> you know, Misty Campy, don't you? Oh, yeah. Misty Campy. I did her daughter's wedding and uh, I did a, a beautiful, beautiful young lady, a fine young man. And uh, we were setting up the wedding and she said to me, she said, now Matt, what do we owe you? And I said, oh, there'll be no money. But you got a lake full of fish, don't you? <laughs> I don't. I don't do weddings for cash anymore. Now I do them for things: fishing, hunting properties. <laughs> but if you really, if you, if you really want to be blessed by God, give to someone who cannot repay you. Okay. Second of all. It's not what, it is the title of this second part. That's not what you think. When we talk about giving, aren't you, aren't you with me? First thing you think of is money, right? We talk about giving, but you know what? Some of the best things in life you can give, it's not money. Do you know that? So the best gifts you can give isn't money. Boy, I was at a meeting the other day. I got to tell you this. I was at a pastor's meeting the other day, and this guy came from this, this charitable organization, and they're raising money. And you know what he, you know what he told us? There were about five of us. He goes, it's a good, it's a good organization. It's good. But he goes, you know, he goes, he goes, I need you to go back to your church. And, and, and he didn't say it out loud, but he, he hinted. He basically was saying, go back to your church. Find the people with the most money who can give and bring them to our big meeting. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm taking Joe Signego. <laughs> I'm going to take Joe. <laughs> Here's the richest guy in our church right here. <laughs> but then he goes, but then, you know, and I don't get offended too often, do I? I'm not offended. He kind of offended me on this. And he goes, he said, you know, a lot of older folks have life insurance that they're never going to use. We need to tap into that. And then he goes, you know, a lot of those old, he goes, you know, a lot of those older folks, they got farm ground too. Oh, that, I, was, I turned him off. Bloop. You ever turn somebody off? You ever just turn them off? You know, bloop, you're out. The only time I'm going to talk to you about your property is if I can come hunting on it, okay? That's the only time, that's the only time I'm going to discuss your property, okay? You know me. I'm, never, I'm, not, doing any, I'm not doing any of these things. But anyway, the reason I said that is, is that, and this is, if, if, you, if you write things down or you want something to remember that I said this morning, here's the phrase, and it's not mine, but it, it's a great phrase. Some of the best things we can give are things money cannot buy. Some of the best things in life we have are things money cannot buy. Money can't buy some of the best things we have in life. Now you go back to that hoarding thing. You know, it's not just about stuff and lawnmowers and toothbrushes and money. But I want to think, here, here's, the thought, here's the thought I had. Where we hoard things, and we're all, some of us are bad at this. Um, we keep things to ourselves. We, we don't give them away. We keep things like kindness. How about this one? Compliments. Or... Hugs, or kind words, or encouragement. We keep it to ourselves. God gives us these divine moments where somebody needs a word or something, and we know we should say it, and we don't. We're, we're hoarding the things that person needs. Sometimes all that person needs is a hug. And you know what? We don't do it. Sometimes that, that young child, all they need is a word of encouragement. And we hold it back. Some of the best things in life. Hey, look at this. And you know what? They're free. Okay, smiles are free. Hugs are free. Kindness is free. Do not, do not hoard these things. Give these things away. Don't hold on to those things. You give those things away, okay? Those things are priceless. Um, the last thing I'll say is Jesus said you will be repaid he said, when you give to those who cannot repay you, he said, you will be paid back at the resurrection. Okay, What he's trying to teach you is, is that when you give, 
is that when you give, you may not be rewarded for it here. Okay? When you give to somebody, you may not, <laughs> you may not get that good feeling. You may not get that thank you card. You may not get that uh, uh, approval or whatever you're looking for. When you give, sometimes you don't get back the things you thought you would. I, I made the mistake of going up, what was it, Friday? I was up in Fairview Heights in that madness. And uh, somebody, uh, and everybody wants to make a left, you know, in your lane. So me and this other guy, we stopped and we let this young lady make the left into the gas station, I think. And she did not even give us the wave. <laughs> you know, a little courtesy wave. Like, thank you. <laughs> Nothing. Just like, mm. <laughs> That's something you would say. Mm. <laughs> but Jesus said, you may not be rewarded for it here, but in the resurrection, I will reward you in the resurrection. You will be rewarded. And a lot of times, well, I say, I say, this, I say this a lot. You know, I say, hey, God saw that. <laughs> he wrote that down. But you know, I want to be positive today. Here's the thing. God, one day in the resurrection, God's going to look at you and he's going to say, you know what? I saw that. I saw you pay for that family's lunch. I saw you hand out blankets and gloves. I saw you shovel that old, older folks driveway. I saw you pay for that elderly nun's candy at the hospital. I saw that. He's going to say, I saw your generosity. I saw it. And now you're going to be rewarded for it. Uh, I've got Laura's dad's funeral tomorrow. And one of the, one of the lines in, in the funeral, my, my father-in-law, um, wonderful man. But uh, this, how, how do I say this nice? This is how I'm going to say it. I'm going to say, I don't know how to say this nicely. He saved things. <laughs> He, he saved a lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> we're estimating someday, we're estimating eight dumpsters. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe ten. Um, he saved a lot of things. But here's the thing about him. He'd give you anything. He was, and, and we all laugh about it. Yeah, he was a hoarder. And, 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 and don't tell Laura this. All the kids are hoarders, too. <laughs> All of them. All of them. We have a box in our house, Lynn. I'm not joking. We have a box of that cake icing mix. It's in a box. It's powdery. And you add water for it. It expired in 2001. <laughs> when you shake it, it's like rocks in there. But we can't pitch it because we might need that someday. I don't know what cake we're putting that thing on. <laughs> yeah, Joe's birthday cake. <laughs> I love picking. It's my last Sunday. I got to pick on you. But even though, even though this family, they are hoarders. They don't believe it. They're in denial. They're collectors. Thank you, Brother Mark. <laughs> but they give you anything they have. They give you anything. So you be like that. Don't be the hoarder, but you, you be like that. Give away the things. Here, here you go. Give away the things that are priceless. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you have given us things to give away. They're free. But we, we hold them back sometimes. We're like, ah, eh, maybe not today. Ah, eh, not now. May we truly not hoard those things. May we give them away. Smiles are free. Hugs are free. Kindness is free. Compliments are free. And there will be times, Father, when it isn't going to feel good and we're not going to feel like we were rewarded for it. But in heaven, we will. In heaven, we will. So thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen.